All right, in today's video, we're talking about mixing in mono, and we're also gonna do a plugin review on BX Solo by Brainworks. Now, I'm gonna be straight up front. I do not mix in mono. I reference check in mono, and I highly recommend that. So take all of my opinions here with a grain of salt, but there are a lot of engineers out there that say when they started mixing in mono that they got great benefit from it, and I don't discount that. So we're gonna go over some of the benefits about mixing in mono and definitely talk about phase issues and frequency masking and why I reference check in mono. And we're gonna talk a lot about this little plugin, which is really helpful. So let's get right into it. So if you don't have a good spectrum analyzer, I have a video on this one. It's called Span by Voxango and it's free. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description here. It tells you all about how to use it. This other little plugin here is the BX Solo by Brainworks. And between these two plugins, you can really help isolate phase issues that your ears might not have picked up on. Back in the day in audio engineering school, I was trained by the old school guys to look at your woofer and to feel it and make sure that air is pushing. And a lot of phase issues do take some experience before you really start to pick up on it. But so here with the kick and bass soloed out, this is actually set to mid side. And if I zoom in at the very bottom, that little bit of pinky orange here in the high mids around 4K, that's the side information. So there's very little side information coming out and that's from the transient of the kick. And you could see on the bottom right, the correlation meter is all to the right of the zero mark, yellow and green. And if there were any phase issues going on, this would dip left and it would go down into the red on the left side of the zero mark and you'd know that you had a phase issue. So this is one of the best things to do with your low end is after you're EQing and setting your bass and kick together and you're doing your side chaining, you reference this way to make sure that your ears aren't missing some phase issues that you have. And as you can see, I have no phase issues going on between the kick and the bass, which is fantastic. Now, with this BX Solo by Brainworks, which is free, I have seen a little bit of confusion about how the controls work. Uh, but here on the left, this LR, that flips your left and your right, so you don't have to flip your headphones around. You can just real quick get a reference by flipping your left and right channel, which is really cool. Now over here, if I click the M solo, this is not mono. In this plugin, this is just the mids, and the sides drop out, which you can see that. And with this plugin, if you want to hear a mono, you take the dial, the white dial on the right, and take it from 100% and drag it all the way down, and now it says mono. So this is how you reference a mono with this plugin. So here you can start soloing out instruments and listening to things in mono to see if you have some frequency masking going on. Now, I have a whole video on how to manage competing frequencies, and I can link to that in the description as well. And in that video, I talk about how frequencies step on each other and overlap each other. And I like to think of that as competition between frequencies, but the technical term for that is frequency masking. And a lot of people say they have a much easier time EQing in mono because it helps them hear the frequency masking. And I say if that helps you, that's great. Go ahead and do that. But some of the pitfalls that you want to watch out for, especially like reverbs and stereo effects of any kind, that can be really tricky to mix in mono and that can cause you some problems. So if you're going to be EQing when you already have stereo effects going, you're going to want to mute all of those to do your EQ work. But that said, this plugin has another really cool feature. You can use this as a simple widening tool on your master bus to widen your mixes. You just push it up a notch. Now I've increased 50% stereo width and you can see the result in the side information on the spectrum analyzer. Now I have heard that if you take this thing above 200%, you're gonna run into problems. And I believe that. You can see the side information creeping up, but if you want that extra little push right there, it does make a big difference. But this is a really useful little plugin. You know, you can isolate your left, your right, your mids, your sides, and with span you have the correlation meter so you can see visually phase issues if you can't hear them, and you can reference everything in mono. But between these two things, you can really isolate out a lot of frequencies and get a gauge on what's competing and you can get a really good gauge on where you're having phase issues. So this guitar here is at 34% left and this other guitar like clave type wah thing, whatever it is, is at 34% right. 
and when we play them together, you can see that we have this nice separation. One's operating in more of the high mids and one's operating more around 1K. And if I stick it down into mono, it does really help if you're listening in headphones, you can really hear if you would have some frequency masking. A lot of people say that they want their mixes to translate well in mono as well as in stereo. And I'm kind of old school. I think that's a step backwards. I think that if you're listening in a mono environment, you shouldn't expect it to sound great. So I'm not overly concerned with frequency masking that only appears in mono, but that's a very subjective thing. A lot of people do a lot of their EQ work in mono. And I say, hey, if that's your thing, that's great. But there is another old school solution to hear if things are too loud or too quiet because a lot of people are using mono to set levels as well. What I do is I listen in a whole bunch of different volumes. So when I'm setting my faders and stuff or making adjustments, I will turn the volume way up and I'll turn it way down. And it's really easy to hear like if your backing vocals are too loud or quiet when you turn the volume way down. At full listening volume, it can be a little tricky on the ear sometimes to see where you're actually at. So if you want to use mono on top of those methods to help you, then hey, that's great. But that's about the extent of what I understand about mixing in mono. It's not something that I prefer to do, but I highly recommend reference checking in mono. All of the major professional engineers reference check in mono, and they're specially using it to find phase issues. It's a great tool for that. And this plugin is fantastic for all of these reasons and to give you that stereo widening too. But that's my two cents on the subject. Definitely flip into mono for referencing and checking and try mixing it. And if you find that your EQ jobs are getting easier and faster and better when you're in mono, then by all means go for it, but just beware of those stereo effect issues that you could run into. And I'm not gonna go into those into this video because there's a lot of good information out there about it by people that know more about it than I do. But yes, if you're doing a lot of EQ work and a lot of your mix in mono, there are pitfalls to watch out for. But that being said, I highly recommend this little plugin. It's super cool, it's super helpful. And just for fun, let's listen to the mids again. All right, and let's listen to the sides. Yeah, see, you hear all that reverb on the snare that's largely living in the sides? If you were EQing this snare against these other guitars, that might be a little tricky in mono. You kind of want to have that stereo reference going on when you're doing that, but that's just my opinion. I don't have too much more to add on that topic, but I highly recommend that little BX solo from Brainworks and check out my video on span and my other video on competing frequencies and frequency masking. And I hope all of these little tools help you out. And if you have any more questions about mono or BX solo, feel free to hit me up in the comments. And I made this video in a response to a comment asking about this. And I really appreciate that question in the comments. It's a fantastic question. And mono is definitely something that we need to be aware of for reference checks and it's totally worth exploring. There is a reason it's a big deal right now and a lot of people are mixing in mono because it is a powerful tool. So yes, I highly encourage you to make sure if you don't have something like BX Solo, pick it up and get familiar with it, especially for those low end phase issues. But anyway, I hope you got a lot out of that and thanks again. Let me know in the comments if you want me to tackle anything else and I'll catch you all on the next one.